Hey guys, what's up and welcome to my channel. My name is Miley. If you are new here, I do a new DIY video every single week. So do what you want with that information. Guys, 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 guys. This is the third and final video for my patio makeover. And let me tell you, this place has gone through a bit of a transformation. At the beginning of this, we had a lumber yard. And then after the first video, we still had a lumber yard, but there was a very cute chair and ottoman in it. And then after last week, we were starting to see the final results, but we weren't there yet. It was still pretty empty and pretty sparse out here. And if you saw the end of my last video, you might have noticed there was a big old space between the chairs that I had out here. And that's because this week I made a couch. Yes, that's right. I made a couch. I designed it out. I built it. I sewed everything. I even made most of the pillows that I put on it. So if you want to see how I made this couch and how I finished off my patio, keep watching. The first thing in making this couch was actually sitting down and designing this thing out. I know there are a bunch of people online that have made super duper similar couches and I purposefully haven't watched any of those videos for a few reasons. One, I find that when I design something out, I can design it to fit my skill set and what I'm comfortable doing. And also when I watch a video with somebody I would consider a more advanced woman Woodworker, I get psyched out that I'm not going to be able to do something. So I just find it best to acknowledge other people have done something similar, but no, I took my own approach. To start the building process, the first thing I made was making the arms of the couch. The way I designed out this couch, the arms actually determine how big and how tall it would be. And I was going for more of an outdoor day bed look. So I made sure to make this couch extra deep at 32 inches and 28 inches high. And to make these arms, I took three two by sixes and started prepping them by doing my favorite thing, sanding, sanding, and more sanding. And after hours of sanding, I cut four pieces at 32 inches and four pieces at 25 inches. And with every project, I have a goal of learning a new skill. And the new thing I was learning for this project was pocket holes. Now I know if you're an actual woodworker, pocket holes are not a big deal but I have never done one, so I was really excited to learn this new skill. And I find having a goal of learning a new skill with every project quickly grows what you know how to do without overwhelming yourself with every single project. So let me explain very poorly what a pocket hole is and how you do it. So you take this jig and I got a Craig jig, most people, I think, get a Craig jig when they want to do pocket holes. And you take this tool that comes in the kit and you put it on the edge of your board and this tells you how thick your board is. Then you set your jig and your drill bit that also comes in this kit to match that thickness. So for me, my board was one and a half inches thick, so I set the jig and the drill bit to one and a half inches. Then using a little clampy clamp, you clamp the jig to the board and you start drilling down into the hole of the jig. This creates an angled hole down into the board that you then can use a special pocket hole screw to screw two boards together. And I did watch a video that explains this much better, so I will make sure to put that link in the description down below. But what I learned about pocket holes is one, I should have been using pocket holes on basically all all my previous projects that I've done and a pocket hole is a much more secure and stronger bond between two pieces of wood because of how the pocket hole works you are screwing into grain on grain which is a much stronger hold than say screwing into the top of the board also 
pocket holes are a great way for hiding screws, which is something I really wanted for this project. I didn't want screws all over the couch, taking away from the clean look I was going for. So to put these arms together, I did four pocket holes on each end of the 25 inch long pieces, and then taking two of those pieces and two of the 32 inch long pieces, I screwed them all together. And in the end, I came out with an arm that was 32 by 28. Next up was building the frame for this couch. So I wanted this couch to be extra long, one, to fill the space and also create as much seating as possible. Also, this is a day bed, so if I wanted to lay down on it, I'm tall, so I kind of needed it to be extra long. Of course, I had to do a bit more sanding before doing anything else, and then taking two of my 2x4s, I cut them down to 96 inches, and then taking a few more 2x4s, I cut those down into eight pieces at 29 inches long. And then taking six of my 29 inch long pieces, I made two pocket holes at one end of the board. And when I was done with that, I flipped all of the boards over and made two more pocket holes at the other end. I'm not sure if this is actually like a thing, but I thought maybe having the screws going in opposite directions might make it stronger, but I truly don't know. This could have been a completely pointless step. And then it was time to put this frame together. Taking all of those small boards, I tried to evenly distribute them out along the two 96 inch long boards. After putting the frame all together, I had two boards left at 29 inches. And taking these boards, I made two pocket holes on each end, but on the same side. And after making those pocket holes, I attached these boards to the inner part of each arm. And to find out where to place them, I measured 14 inches up from the ground, and that's where I placed the top of the board. And now that the frame and the arms were all done, it was time to move it into the patio and put it all together. And taking some plain old two and a half inch long screws, I attached the frame to each arm. In my notes, I wrote, I attached the scram to the bed. It was a hot day, so I think I was a little loopy when I was writing down all my notes. And bam, I had myself an almost couch. The next thing I had to do was cut the rest of my 2x4s to 96 inches, but of course I ran out of 2x4s, so I had to stop for the day. I started off day two by cutting some scrap pieces of 2x4s to 14 inches, and then taking those pieces, I attached them to each beam of of the frame just to add a bit more support in the middle of the couch. Then taking all but one of my 2x4s at 96 inches, I laid those out over the frame and I put screws at each beam. And before I would move on to screwing down the next board, I made sure to do a bit more sanding just to polish up each board before moving on. You know, you can never do too much sanding. Well, I guess technically you can, but you, you, get, you get the point. And to give this couch a back, I had one 2x4 left at 96 inches, so I made two pocket holes at each end of this board to connect this to the top back part of the arms. And then there was only one more thing to do to complete the building portion of this couch. I started off by measuring the space between the back beam and the seat, which ended up being a little over nine and a quarter inches. I then cut three pieces to that length. And with a Craig jig, you can separate all of the parts out. So taking one of the pocket hole parts, I could make two holes on each side of the board at the top and bottom. I thought this would be a nice secure way to attach these boards to the seat and the back beam. I did a little once over with my sander and then I began the staining process. I will say I probably shouldn't have waited until the end to stain everything because it was a pain getting in all of those cracks, but I got through it. But yeah, it, it was a pain. That was for sure. Before I move on with this couch, let's talk about curtains. 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 I spent the morning of the third day rehanging up all the twinkle lights I had 
because it wouldn't be a patio without twinkle lights. Also, I wouldn't be a millennial if I didn't have twinkle lights on my patio. I was waiting to hang these up until later in the week to make a decision on whether I was repainting or not, and I eventually decided to just leave the color for a few reasons. One, a bunch of people in my previous video commented just to leave it, so thank you for helping me make my decision. And then also as the room started to come together, I remember I specifically picked out this color because it was on the lighter side and I started to really like that this was a lighter color. Now it's time to make some cushion covers and I know I have made cushion covers in my previous two videos but I swear these back cushions are a bit different. They're a bit more modern and sleeker. So to make this more modern looking cushion cover, taking the fabric I used for the cushions, I drew out a rectangle at the bottom corner half, making sure to leave about a half an inch of seam allowance. And the rectangle I drew out was 26 inches long by 23 and a half inches tall. Once I had that rectangle all drawn out, I cut a line straight up from one raw edge to the other raw edge, and then folded this fabric at the top line of the rectangle. Basically folding the fabric in half, but it was a little uneven at the bottom, so I cut all that extra fabric off so that everything matched up. By folding the fabric in half, this makes it so that there's no seam at the top of the cushion cover, giving this cushion a cleaner look. And after folding them in half, I sewed two straight lines up each side. And when I was done sewing up those two straight lines, I was basically left with your standard pillow cover. And to make this more of a cushion cover, at the top of the cover, at each corner, I made a gusset. And a gusset is just a fancy word for making something bigger. So pulling the fabric up Part, I created a little triangle at each corner and pinned and sewed a straight line to sew that triangle down. And this leaves you with a bit of extra fabric, so I cut that off and flipping this inside out, you can see that a gusset creates a boxier look, which I would consider more of a cushion cover. And finally, the last thing I did to complete this cover was sew in a zipper at the bottom. And after sewing in the zipper, I was able to then create two gussets at the bottom half of the cushion cover. And for the insert, I got five of these 26 by 26 inch Euro shams from Home Goods. And to make sure the corners of the cushions really kept their boxier shape, I took some extra fluff and added those to the corners. Now comes the fun part that took fur forever to make forever like i started and finished this cushion cover and bam eight hours of my life were just gone it is all really easy sewing so please don't think you have to be an advanced sewer to make this but like i said before i was going for more of an outdoor day bed look so instead of making a bunch of seat cushions i made one long cushion so it was just the sheer size of this cushion cover that made this a very long process i started off by taking the rest of my fabric and cutting out a piece that was 31 inches tall by 96 inches long. And I really took my time measuring everything out. If I tried to rush through this process, some measurements would have gotten messed up and I didn't have any extra fabric to play around with, so I really couldn't mess up anything. After cutting out the main piece, I cut out all the side pieces two pieces that were 3 inches by 96 inches and two pieces that were 3 inches by 31 inches. And after all of that was cut out, I made some cording and attached it to the whole outer perimeter of the large piece. And in previous projects, when I have this much fabric around a sewing machine, I usually get fabric that I don't mean to sew caught up into the sewing machine. And it's always annoying because I have to stop and seam rip it all out and then continue sewing and it usually makes the process longer. So for this part, I did again take it nice and slow so that no mistakes were made. And for the bottom piece, I ended up using a different fabric. I originally got this fabric for the cushions on this couch, but when it arrived, it wasn't comfy fabric that you would want to sit on. It was more spin that feet. Uh, yeah, sure. That, that, I think that sums it up. 
So when I realized I didn't like this fabric, I went to return it on Amazon and they ended up refunding me but telling me I could keep the fabric. So I just had it laying around. And the more I thought about it, I thought because this is a more outdoor durable fabric, it would make for a nice bottom half of this cushion. For the actual insert in this cushion, I had a hard time finding foam that would fit the size I needed. I found a few options, but they they were all pretty expensive, but then on Amazon, I stumbled upon this three inch memory foam mattress and I calculated it out that if I got the full size mattress, I could cut it up and use two pieces to fill this cushion cover. And by the time I was ready for this step, I was a bit loopy and tired. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Once I opened up the mattress, I measured everything out and used a knife to cut it all up because somewhere along the lines, I heard that a knife is the best way to cut foam. And once both pieces were cut out, I put the foam into the cushion cover to complete this cushion. And now, I think we're ready. I think we're ready for the final design montage. This project and room took a bit longer than anticipated and was also a bit more work than anticipated, but I am so happy with how this room turned out. I'm pretty sure I created my dream patio. I'm in love with all of the colors and the mismatched furniture that still goes together. This is such a fun home oasis and I am going to be out here all the time. I'm currently even out here editing this video. If you liked this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification button so you know when I post, and I will see you guys next week. I'm gonna go take a nap. Bye guys.